welcome to this online worship service. Today we are going to talk about the different storms of life. Because when you think about it, we all have uh, struggles, we all have challenges. So the question is, what do we do? What do we do when we hit an obstacle? What is our first reaction? Or what is our last reaction? For example, even though I am a follower of Christ, I still have this tendency to put my faith in my own strength and in my own ability to fix problems only God can, only God is supposed to. It's kind of like I have been walking with God for oh so many years and I know that I am invited to put my struggles into his hands and yet every once in a while I find myself I picked it up again and I have to put it down again only to realize it later that you know once again I'm trying to control what I'm not supposed to and I have to put it down once more to a certain degree we all have this within us where we think like you know I am big enough I'm strong enough that I can handle the storms of life now the reading this morning is from the book of Mark chapter 6 verse 45 to 52 here we have the disciples going through something really similar where they tried to solve a situation by their own strength and of course they couldn't verse 45 immediately he compelled his disciples to get into the boat and to go before him to the other side to Beth Shedia while he sent the crowd away so right now we are right after the uh, feeding of the 5,000 where Jesus you know performed this incredible miracle and the crowd was so amazed they were so hyped they actually wanted to make Jesus the king by force you know they were just praising Jesus they were just praising the disciples and I guess Jesus thought enough is enough so he you know sent the disciples ahead of him and he sent the crowd away verse 46 when he had sent them away he departed to a mountain to pray when evening came the boat was in the midst of the sea and he was alone on the land now quite often when we want to understand a Bible passage all we need to do is just to stop and imagine it so imagine it you know Jesus was on this elevated place on this hill overlooking the entire lake now we don't know how it exactly looked like but we knew that he could see the boat that uh, in the middle of the lake where the disciples were and Jesus was right there you know praying while he could see the lake he saw them straining at rowing for the wind was against them about the fourth watch of the night he came to them walking on the sea and would have passed by them but when they saw him walking on the sea they supposed it was a ghost and cried out for they all saw him and were troubled immediately he spoke to them and said be of good cheer it is I do not be afraid then he went up to them in the boat and the wind ceased they were greatly astonished in themselves beyond measure and wondered now this is one of those uh, Bible passages where if you went to church or if you went to Sunday school chances are you heard it so many times it's easy to overlook all the important things that happened here now the first thing we need to focus on is the reference to time the first reference to time we receive is not even in this reading but in the one preceding it 
when the disciples approach Jesus and tell him, listen, Jesus, it's getting late. You know, the sun is already setting. These people are hungry. You should just send them away so they could buy food for themselves because we are in this deserted place. But Jesus says, no, you feed them. And he ends up performing this incredible miracle. Now, the other reference to time that we have is in verse 48, where we can read about the fourth watch of the night. He came to them walking on the sea. Now, in ancient times, every city, every town, every uh, village had uh, guards watching over them in the night because there was such a high risk of, you know, someone attacking or someone looting. And these guard rotations were divided up into four watches. The first one was from uh, 6 p.m. to 9 a.m. and then from 9 a.m. to midnight and then from midnight to 3 a.m. and then to 3 to 6. There was no need for a fifth watch because by that time the sun would already be rising. And this is how the 12 hours of the night was sort of guarded. So what we can know here is that the fourth watch meant that by the time Jesus was walking toward the disciples, it was already dawn. You know, the sun was already rising. The reason why this is important is because when the disciples left, they got into this storm. And this storm was so big, it was so uh, furious that effectively, the disciples spent basically all night battling with the waves and battling with this, this wind, trying to get out of it, trying to reach the other side. And they couldn't. Now, once we recognize that, all of a sudden, you know, these storms, this storm has a new meaning. It wasn't like a couple of hours. It wasn't like a really scary situation. It was an intense time that basically lasted for about six hours. It wasn't like an intense workout. This was a really, really scary situation. And of course, when we notice that, the question is, well, why didn't Jesus came sooner? I mean, what was Jesus doing? Effectively, what Jesus was doing is that he was praying and he was waiting. He was praying and waiting for the disciples to give up, to realize that the storm was too big. In many ways, the problem was that many of the disciples were seasoned uh, fishermen. They were seasoned sailors. I guess probably the most seasoned must have been Peter. And they knew how to handle the storm. They knew what to do in that kind of crisis situation. So they used their abilities, they used their expertise, and Jesus was waiting and waiting for them to realize that that storm was beyond them. I guess it took them about six hours of intense working and struggling and trying for them to notice that, you know what guys, this is too big. We may actually lose our lives here because this is too much for us. After six hours, you know, I, I'm sure some of them were so exhausted they could barely move themselves. I'm sure others were so sore in the arms that they couldn't even lift their arms, let alone, you know, keep rowing. It took them six hours to realize that they cannot fix that situation, that they cannot get to the other side, they cannot overcome the storm. And as soon as they realized that, as soon as they realized that that storm was too big, Jesus showed up. Jesus showed up and said, be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. Basically repeating the most often stated uh, truth in the Bible. Don't be afraid. That those of us who follow Christ, we don't have to be afraid of any situation, of any person, of any circumstance, because we are invited to trust in him. And as soon as Jesus got into the boat, what happened? 
the very storm that pushed them to their limits and beyond disappeared. The very object that threatened their lives, that probably pushed them beyond their physical limits, sort of ceased. Now, what makes this entire episode even more powerful when we notice in verse 45 that Jesus actually compelled his disciples to get into the boat? Yeah, imagine that. Jesus actually led the disciples into this situation. Now, why did he do that? Because he was teaching them something really important. And ultimately, he was teaching us as well. He was teaching them that there will be those storms that are too big for us and we need to learn to let go let go but not just let go but put it in god's hands not trying to struggle with what we cannot control you know if i would have been in that situation that the disciples were in chances are Jesus would have been coming to me walking on water in about an hour. Okay, who am I kidding? I know nothing about sailing, so chances are Jesus would have been coming to me walking on water in about 10 to 15 minutes, because that's how long I would have needed to realize that this storm was too big for me, that I cannot fix this on my own. So, in many times it is our ability that misleads us and pushes us to situations where we are trying to control something and we cannot and we hurt ourselves with worry we harm ourselves with anxiousness as a result so the word of god instructs us to call on the name of jesus not as a last resort after we have tried literally everything else but as the first there is this tendency. I know that there is this tendency to, to put our faith in our own strength, to put our faith in our own ability and skills, especially when you are good at managing a crisis situation. And I know, you know, some of us are really uh, talented at that, but still, we mustn't do that. Why? Because regardless of how talented we are, there will always be those storms that are bigger than us. I think the older you are or the more you live, the more you experience that, the more you recognize that. So if we only stopped trying to handle, trying to control the, the situations we cannot, our lives could become a shining example of how bright, how uncharacteristically wonderful and incredible this world could be. Not because we wouldn't have any storms, but because the presence of Christ in us would turn those storms into something so different we wouldn't even call it a storm. So ultimately, we all have to ask ourselves this question. What are we going to do? Are we going to allow God to fight for us? Or are we going to continue to struggle with something we aren't even supposed to? In conclusion, if we could only get this one thing right in our walk with God, we would have this remarkable life. Again, not because of the absence of storms, but because of the presence of Christ so close around us that we would always feel it. In Jesus' name, Amen. Heavenly Father, we turn to you today with a heavy heart. We turn to you with all our struggles, with all our challenges and our storms that take away our peace, that take away our calmness through you. Heavenly Father, you know our hearts, you know 
how talented, how experienced and how able we are. So often it is our own ability that is robbing us from the amazing life that we should have. Father, you know how much we like to control things. You know how much we like to be in control. And yet, whether we like it or not, there are so many areas where we have no control, where we cannot manage in our own strengths. Heavenly Father, we turn to you today and we ask for your help to let go, to let go of all the things that burden us, not carelessly cast them aside, but to put them in your hands and to leave it there so you may deal with and mend the situation that is beyond us. Teach us your ways so we may have real lasting peace in you. In Jesus' name I ask. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.